What's going on? Okay, thank you. Um, there's been an assault, uh, so we had to find a secure room for the assailant till he's fit enough to be questioned. Some killer or uh, you, surely. I'm uh, sorry, why do we have to take him? Uh, it's the only room free. Uh, yes, until the next CT patient needs it. Sure. He assaulted a member of staff, so we do what we can to help, okay? A member of staff? You're not going to believe this. Actually, I strongly advise we hold fire on making any public accusations until we have a definitive victim statement. Whatever you say. I'd better check those injuries. Uh, I don't think so. I won't tell you your job. You keep out of mine. Except, as you admit, you caused Mr Clooney's injuries. I really can't allow you to have any contact with the suspect, assuming he is a suspect. Right, well, um, it's over to you, Mr Byrne. Yes, of course. Sorry. You do realise Lee Morgan was right. Alan Clooney did rape his wife. Like you say, you stick to your job. I'll stick to mine. Hello, Mr. Clooney. My name's Joseph Byrne. I'm a cardiothoracic registrar. My job is simply to treat these injuries. I'm not aware of the circumstances or indeed interested in any offence that you may or may not have committed. Now, um, can you tell me about the treatment you've been receiving? I was uh, in a crash, car crash, and uh, uh, Dr. Nola Archery Stent thing. Yes, yes, I remember. You were in theatre this afternoon. You know Dr. Naylor? Oh, yes. Yes, I know Miss Naylor. Uh, Assuming you will keep this brief, yes. Alan Clooney, 24, Netherbridge, Holby. That's me. Had reports you were involved in a sexual assault last night in the hospital grounds. Reports? Can you confirm or deny these reports? I think you need to be a little more specific. Do you know a Dr Jacqueline Naylor? Jack? She was treating me yesterday. And? Did she say I assaulted her? We need Mr. Varley prep for theatre. We're moving him up the stent list. Quick as you can, please. Are you all right? Hassled. I mean, with that pervert guy jumping you at me, it must have been terrifying. It's really not worth talking about. I did warn Dr. Griffin, but she didn't take any notice. She wouldn't even let me tell the other staff. Yeah, well, I gave him a kick where he won't forget about it. Oh, Jack, thank God you're okay. I've been trying to ring you all night. The police want to talk to you, hon. Sorry, Lola, we're up against it. Ah, oh, do you see Stanley? This is Jack Naylor. Miss Naylor, I've been trying to reach you. Dr. Griffin tells me you were assaulted last night. Actually, I didn't ask you to do that. I also understand Dr. Griffin helped you to escape from the assailant. Jack, are you all right? I've only just heard. Look, I'm trying to get a patient prepped for theatre here, and we've got the suit from Helmer and Schmidt downstairs, drumming his fingers on the hospital's reputation, and all you people can do is worry about some delusional sado. So, he didn't assault you? <sighs> Maria, help me. Mr. Varley, please. He's not here. What? Jack, this is important. We were down a bed because we got that Clooney bloke in Bay 3. Tell me you haven't bumped Varley. Yeah, I, I rang him, told him to come in tomorrow. Was this your idea? Miss Naylor, please understand that without a statement from you, it'll be very hard to detain Mr. Clooney for questioning, let alone charge him with anything, even with Dr. Griffin as your corroborating witness. Good. Then we can get the bed back. See your girlfriend. Who's that then? Dr. Naylor. Miss Naylor. We don't actually use the term doctor, not in that way. 
She dumped you, didn't she? I don't think that we should talk about this. There's a lot of them about. Please, I don't Prick want to take part in this conversation. Please. I thought I was getting on really well with her. And she starts coming on to this bloke, this other patient. Oh, he's got bags of cash and he's talking about how he's going to give her some job, but he's just a creep. I tried to warn her about him, but she wouldn't listen. It was like I was invisible, like I was something she wanted to scrape off her shoe. I hate that, don't you? someone to look at those bruises. Get out. Get out. I'm worried about you. Truly. Well, that's the funniest thing I've heard in a very long time. What did he do to you? <sighs> Nothing a sharp elbow couldn't deal with. You're in shock. You shouldn't be here. You want me to accept sympathy from you? Alan Clooney's a dangerous man. You need to make a statement to the police. No, I need you to disappear so I can get ready in this peace. This goes beyond any argument that you and I may have. I have to go to the lab and collect a stent for Dan Clifford, so if you don't mind... Please. I'm trying to do the right thing here. Obsessive-compulsive morality, you need help with that. It doesn't matter what you say, I wouldn't wish sexual assault on my worst enemy. No, Joseph. That is a downright lie. Alan Clooney trying to rape me. That makes you feel good. That's an appalling thing to say. Because it turns me into a victim, doesn't it? And if I'm a victim, then you can feel sorry for me. And you like that. If you can put me in a pigeonhole, the world falls into place. You can feel strong again. Your bleeding heart sympathy reinforces the great burn sense of moral righteousness. You feel powerful. Just like Alan Clooney wanted to feel powerful. Frankly, when you think of it like that, you and Alan, you're pretty much the same. Doing the twitch? You were asking about Faye. I thought you would have known. I had a call from her first thing. Her sister's been taken ill. Her sister? Faye's sister? Yeah. She's taken some time out to be with her. Weeks compassionate. And she had some holiday owing, so... You didn't know. Battery's dead in my mobile, sir. Patient, I believe, lobectomy. He's been transferred up from the ED. Oh, yes, uh, chest pains, breathless, hemoptysis, BP60 over 40, oxygenation's low. How's Faye? Fine, thank you. Uh, Faye, too, please, yes. So the, uh, the cancer bank? Oh, uh, could be an infection. It's hard to say. Bloods? Acute. Exactly how long ago did you do the lobectomy? Three months ago. We couldn't get all the tumour. Maybe a pet CT scan, then. Do you want me to try and get you a slot? Joseph? Uh, yeah, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Are you with us today? Or... Trouble in paradise. Mr. McDonald. Master Bluter. Bella. Hello. Oh. Absolutely, I'm Mr. Hope. Ms. Naylor. A pet CT scan, they can fit you in in 20 minutes. It's okay, uh, yes, we'll need some uh, portable oxygen for that. Okay. Sorry, could I, um. Okay. <coughs> okay, Mr. McDonald, a nice deep breath. And again, please. Uh, 
One more time. Thank you. This is the cancer back, right? Well, let's not make any pronouncements, eh? Not till we get the results back. Give me a favour, yeah? Oversee this CT scan. Mm hmm Hmm, to time of the bloods, but what's causing it? Okay, Mr. McDonald, would you like to? Um... Okay. Right. Now the good news is we're fairly sure this isn't the cancer. Oh. You um, you haven't been taking any recreational drugs or large amounts of aspirin, have you? No. Okay, thank you. Right, uh, let's have a platelet and blood transfusion. Where's Mr. Byrne? This is his patient. Not cancer, definitely not cancer. Mr. Hope was talking about in a plastic state, wasn't he? You understand what that means? Yeah. We wondered if it might be some reaction to the chemo. But decided that was unlikely. Treatment stopped over a month ago. If there was a reaction, we'd expect to see it before now. Is there something? <coughs> Anything. die from this? It's possible, yes. His white cell count is very low. Mum? Tamazolamide. You know what that is? Yes. And? I gave him ten days supply. On whose prescription? No one's mine. Let me get this straight. Um, are you saying you gave him ten days' dosage in one go? Yes. Look, he was using docetaxel. Which I prescribed. And which you said was ineffective in his case. You said the cancer was still there, it was untreatable, just a question of time, am I right? You're not qualified to prescribe. I know. Don't you think I know that? Mr Byrne recommended it. I believe what I said was trials with temozolomide were ongoing with regard to this condition. No, you said it was viable, it was an alternative, it was worth trying. Where did you get hold of it? Online from Canada. You need a prescription? I forged it. There is no way I would have recommended temozolomide. How can you just stand there and say that? Look, if I've done something wrong here, then this is your fault. All I did was follow your advice. And I'll tell anybody that, OK? I'll go to the director of the hospital, the BMA, whatever. If anyone's in the wrong here, it's you. Did you? Tamazolamide? I mentioned it. I certainly didn't suggest she'd go out and buy it. So she's lying? She's mistaken. Whatever, it's your word against hers. What if she reports you? Oh, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. I've got more important things in my mind right now. What can be more important than this? You told her about the drug, you suggested it was a possibility, so she got hold of it. That sounds pretty unequivocal to me. If she goes to the GMC, you could be struck off. Oh, that's ridiculous. No, that's what happens, Joseph. What if he dies? God, why is it after all of this time I still feel like I have to look after you? I'm fine. No, you're not. You're a mess. You're like a magnet for bad energy. Oh, you should know. Has she left you? Nobody said anything. It's just your face. Yeah? Well, for once, your crystal balls let you down. Yeah, OK, I'm, uh, I'm worried about her. She's with her sister somewhere. I don't know where. She's not answering the phone, not to me, not to anyone.
Ah, the wanderer returns. You're patient, but it seems other concerns have taken priority. And once again, Miss Naylor here has left holding the baby, as it were. No, it's, it's fine. I agree to cover. Mr. Byrne had a patient on the ED. Right, anyone needs me, AAU. Joseph? Uh, yeah? What's all this I've been hearing about temozolamide? No, Miss Naylor is innocent for once. The patient's stepdaughter told me. I hope, for your sake, the wife doesn't want to make a formal complaint. Well, I've done nothing wrong, and she can't prove I did. Actually, I think in this instance, the onus would be on you. So let's hope she can be persuaded not to take things further. We'll do a chest train, get the fluid out of his lungs and see. It's a waiting game, I'm afraid. I had a bunch of keys. You didn't mind a chance to see where I put them? Me? That's Faye's job, isn't it? Looking after you, doing your pet lunch. Can I talk to you for a second? Sure. Look, I feel awful even thinking this, but shouldn't it have been obvious to Mum that she was going to harm Jono with this drug? That your stepfather is terminally ill, essentially, and some people will do anything in those circumstances. I'm not condoning it, but your mother made a mistake. It happens. I'm not so sure it was. What? A mistake. She gave him double the safe dose. Mum was a ward sister at St James's. She must have known what she was doing. Lucky you were a Boy Scout. You left them in AAU. They're in Lyndon's office. One of the porters brought them up. What are you going to do about Mrs. MacDonald? Uh, you're wanted, Mr. MacDonald. Right. Hi. Um, I wonder if we could have a word, please. He refuses to accept the reality of his situation. He says he does. Makes all the right noises, but... Deep down, he just thinks he's gonna go on and on. Is that what you want? Do you want him to? Like this? No. We all have to witness this gradual erosion of everything that makes John John. Why did you lie about what Mr. Byrne told you? You know what, I feel like I know you somehow. I don't think so. I mean what it's like to feel so conflicted. To love someone but not want to take responsibility for them. I take responsibility. I look after him night and day. Yeah, but it rankles, right? And you feel guilty and it's the same for everyone in your shoes. And so you found a way of giving you all some release. Mr. Byrne mentioned a drug. You get hold of it and accidentally misprescribe it. No. Really, because given your background, surely you would not... It was a mistake. I don't think so. And I doubt the police will either. Of course, there are other things to consider. The emotional turmoil you're in. I suppose it's possible to miscalculate. The hospital authorities will have to get involved, of course, and the police, as I say. Fortunately for you, hospital boards tend to believe patients. Police, on the other hand, are more likely to believe what doctors tell them. What I tell them. And what are you going to say? Well, that rather depends. Mr. Byrne, you know what? I'm thinking you made a mistake there, too. He may have mentioned temozolamide, but he certainly didn't recommend you obtain it and self-prescribe. In which case, my advice would be to let sleeping dogs lie. And when the police ask you what you think, why I gave Jono the drug? Like I say, unbelievable emotional turmoil, confusion and grief. Yes.
all sorted. Mrs. MacDonald isn't going to make a complaint. It seems she made a mistake. You talk to her? Yeah, thank me later. Listen, I can manage the shop if you want to get off and sort things with Faye. What is it? Hmm? What do you want? Drinking alone? Not any longer, it would appear. It's gone then. What do you want to know? Has she left me? I already asked you that. You already made up a story. Yes and no. Yes and no what? Uh, yes, she has. But, uh, no, she hasn't. I wouldn't drink anymore. Mm. One of those things women do. String you along, just in case. Anyway, um, you'll want me to thank you for uh, covering for me today. Absolutely. And saving your ass with Tammy McDonald. Anyway, don't mention it. Delighted. Any time, whatever, it's sorted. Why? Why what? What's in this for you? I mean, there's got to be something in it for you. Maybe. I just don't like to see you suffer. Oh, yeah? Since you've been the cause of so much of it. Quite. Exactly. I'm consumed with guilt. I am. Deep down, I am. You trying to get me pissed? Look, I'm not hitting on you, OK? In the absence of your fiancé, if that's what you're thinking. Don't flatter yourself. I didn't say that. I'm just showing some concern, if that's all right. Whatever. Yeah. You know, I think this has nothing to do with you being a father. If the relationship works, and if you love someone, then what does it matter? What would you know about that? Zilch. Zero nada, but that doesn't stop me assuming a position, arguing it, though, does it? So life is an intellectual exercise, an emotional puzzle, right? You know what, this is exactly what I was talking about earlier with Daisha. What's that? Well, just that uh, men are more emotional. Yeah, absolutely. More trusting. Um, easier to manipulate. Yeah, but you like a challenge, Joseph. You must do. Women with a past, a bit of edge, something amiss, a bit dangerous. Women with thorns. Poetry. I'm flattered, really. If you don't suffer, you don't feel alive. Are you talking about me or you? Uh, both of us, probably. That's why I understand you and you understand me. I've never understood a thing about you. You are a total mystery. You know what I really want? Yes, you said a baby. Mm. Oh, God, you're so fickle. Go on, then. I want an uncomplicated relationship. That's a poor, lonely heart's pitch. <laughs> and what would you do if you had this mythical, uncomplicated woman? Not probably. No, actually, if she was uh, honest, faithful, and honourable, I would never let her go. Fat chance. <laughs> mm. 
you know, Faye is a very, very wise woman, honestly. We both just need some clarity, am I right? No, she needs clarity, I don't know. Yeah, you just need someone who's going to give you kids and stay at home and wash their grubby faces. I wonder if you need some space to think about it. Hey. Look, what are you going to do now? Hit me? Oh, yeah, no, I'm sorry, sorry about that. I got myself in a bit of a state, are you? Look, if I knew where she was planning to go, believe me, I would tell you. What do you mean, planning to go? Faye, if I knew where she was well, going. Hasn't she gone yet? She's still at home. Nayla, can I have a quick word, please? I've got a little problem with my time. Seems like I'm double booked this morning. There's a funding meeting about the possibility of upgrading Darwin. Uh, Mrs. Beecham. Rick got money for Keller, so now she wants money for... Um, right, I get the logic. And then there's a, a little sort of lunch thing after the presentation. I think I should be there. Well, Mrs. Beecham thinks I should be, so, um... So you want me to do Mr. Tonkinson's bypass? Assist on Mr. Tonkinson's. Tonkinson? Tonkinson's, yes. Uh, assist Joseph. After all, he is his patient. But is he available? Like this problem on AU, I... Well, we'll soon find out. Mr. Byrne? Yeah. Mr. Tonkinson's bypass. I was, uh, just going to speak to him about it. Well, uh... We've already done that. Really? Yes, I'm sorry about that. Unavoidable. Traffic. Traffic? Hmm. Well, that's funny. Miss Naylor said that you were in AAU. I heard you'd already been in and had been called away on a mission of mercy. <laughs> really? A little inaccuracy sometimes saves tons of explanation. What's called Wild? Psyche. H.H. Monroe? Anyway, I'm unavailable for the operation. You lead, you assist. Can you go and talk to your patient, please? You need to think on your feet if you're going to play truant. Come on. We need to have a talk. Don't we? Mr. Tonkinson. Mr. Byrne. Oh, I do wish I had those batteries. Don't worry, Mr. Tonkinson. I will sort out the batteries for you. Now. Hi. 
You all right? You don't look well. No, I'm fine. You really shouldn't be here. Why? People could talk. I don't know. Um, look, uh, last night... Yeah? Thank you for... Um, for... Not letting me drive. It was stupid of me. Right. Any time. Well, no, it won't happen again. Won't it? No. Anything else? The flat. Um, I sort of left in a hurry this morning. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Was it, um... Don't you mean were there? Were there any telltale signs? The answer is you wouldn't know anybody had been there. Does that put your mind at rest? Oh, what it can you let in? Just one purse string. Nice handiwork, Mr. Byrne. Thank you. Not at all. 100 mils, please. Are we taking bets on whether he'll make Australia? Don't see why not. We're giving odds. Five to one, he won't make it. Why not? Look at the fusions. Give 100, please. He's wasted his life worrying about this woman, and in doing so, he's rejected anyone else who might have looked after him. Hence the crap diet, hence the blocked arteries. Hence he won't make Australia. Hankering after a lost love is for kids, not for grown-ups. Unclamping cannula. Deserves a second chance. More ties, please. Don't we all? OK, connecting to pump and on bypass. That's great. Head of schedule. Yeah, we make a great team. Mr. Hemodynamically stable, not bleeding. Minimal drainage and good urine output. I'll see. I'll see. It's quite sweet, really. Romantic. If he wakes up and this isn't clicking away, he'll see it as an omen. I love you, Vance. You know, uh, you talk in your sleep. Calm down, Joseph. We were together for almost six months. Me knowing that you talk in your sleep isn't exactly front page news. Hi. How's Mr. Um, Fine. No complications? Nope. Excellent. He'll get to see the love of his life then. I thought you were at lunch. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm en route. Uh, just thought I'd pop in. Apparently these caterers do the most fantastic king prawn. Really? Hmm. I think he sees that as being sort of symbolic. I find it irritating. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless. Joseph, I don't mean to pry, but um, are you all right? Why do you ask? You seem on edge. Is this to do with Faye? If you want to take it easy for the rest of the day, you can do my clinic. No, absolutely not. I'm fine. I promise. OK. All right. See you later. I put the batteries in for you. You shouldn't need it. You'll be seeing her soon. I'm OK to travel, then. The operation went very well. You came out quickly. Quite tight narrowing of the arteries, so uh, it's a good job we operated when we did. It's going to be one hell of a Christmas. Recovery can be a slow process in a man of your age. Uh, best not to rush things. I've got a beautiful woman waiting for me. You must be joking. The sooner the better. She's a lucky lady. My only regret is I didn't do it years ago. You're a long time dead. Yes, well, like I say, easy does it. Uh, we're going to need a clotting screen, please. Thank you. It's stopped. Ah, uh, that would have been in the move. Here. There we are. You could do with one of those, Joseph. To keep fair on your mind. Have you spoken to anybody about this? No. Will you? What do you think I am, Joseph? Don't tempt me. How come I'm the bad guy here? I saved you from driving drunk. I looked after you. You decided to go to Faye's flat. You decided to crash there. You didn't ask me to leave. You did all the running. So don't make me out to be some cheap whore. I just 
just want this all to go away. You want to know whether I'll be on the internet emailing everybody on my contacts list, telling them about what happened. Is that what you want to know? Yeah. I'm surprised you haven't picked it up by now, Joseph. I am not a kiss-and-tell girl. But you, every pore in your body is telling everybody about last night. You're so like your father. Well... He's not responding. Jack is hopeless. Just one more time. All right, try it again. Jack, it's no use. He's gone. Jack. I guess I won my bet. My regret was letting you go, not running after you, not fighting for you. Please, Faye, I really need to speak to you. I make up for all, mind you, but I have to find you. What we had for that short time could never end. And I know when I do finally see you face to face, I'll convince you that we 